Okay, um, I'm gonna make the little puppet guys like I've been having on my blog, how to draw them and set up their pieces and paint them and everything. Um, so this time I'm gonna show you how to actually put them together. I figured it'd be easier on a video than like explaining it on the actual blog, but I'll kind of do a little write-up also. Um, I lost the pieces of the little pilot guy I was making. They're in my art supplies somewhere. But um, I made a little skeleton guy instead. So um, I will put him together today. I also have a lot of the supplies and uh, crafting tools and stuff that you might need. Um, they're really easy to find. You can find my, most of them at like Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any place like that. Um, so let me move my camera to show you the actual uh, crafting process here. Okay, so here's my little skeleton that I did. I laid out his pieces um, in the way that they're going to go. And I, I numbered the back of them so that it's easier to, uh, to s remember where they all belong. And then I've got my glue gun warmed up. I like this one because it's a two temperature glue gun, hot and or high and low. Low is fine for paper, hot is for wood and stuff like that, but it's kind of scary. And it has a little light, but you don't need any kind of special glue gun. And then I have wire. Um, I just got a roll of wire. You can use wire from the floral section at uh, Michael's or any place like that, depending on the size of your model. Um, this is kind of a medium sized wire. If your models are really tall, you probably want to go with something thicker. Um, this guy is going to be about as big as my hand, so you don't need um, really thick wire for that. But if it's much larger, uh, it'll be too floppy if you use thin wire. Uh, and then I've got also um, little wire cutters and little pliers. And these are from Walmart, but any you can go you know hardware store or whatever too. I like these ones because they're really small. So the first thing you want to do, this one in particular, I'm going to put his mouth together because it does need to move. So I'm just going to take a tiny piece of wire and cut it. And I'm going to kind of angle it till it's the same as his mouth. And then just a little glue. And see, no wire sticking out, and the glue is kind of flat. And then I take his head, and I have to figure out how his mouth is going to go. So kind of like that. Yeah. From the front, and then I hold it still with my fingers, and then on the back where that wire is, just cover it with a little blob. Let it cool a little bit, because it's still pretty hot, but the low temperature one you can squeeze the glue pretty soon after. Um, I usually squeeze it just because it makes it dry flatter, but you don't have to squeeze it if it's too hot. Um, I have burned myself pretty badly, so squeezing the glue might not be the best idea, but I, I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> so there's his head. And the next piece is going to be his neck and his torso and his hips. And you're going to use one piece of wire for all of this. So kind of line them up, touching, and then get your wire, and just find out how long that is. It doesn't have to be exact, and go about an inch longer. Cut it. And the reason why you need that extra inch is because you're going to roll the ends. And that I do find easier with the needle nose plier. Make a little curl. 
and that just makes it hold on to the glue better on the head and the hips. And you can adjust the size of these as needed if you made the wire too long or too short. So then same thing, get his head. And the thing you want to make sure of is don't glue over anything that has to move. So make sure his jaw can still move freely. Um, I only made the jaw move because it's a skeleton. Ordinarily, um, you'd probably just make the face be one piece. Unless it was like a dinosaur or something with like a big opening and closing mouth. So once it's on the head, take the neck, and the neck goes behind the jaw. And it gets covered a little. Put a blob on the neck. And again, you don't want to get glue in any of the actual moving pieces. So only get it on the paper itself, not the joint. Get rid of those little strings. And I think I made his wire a little too long, but that's okay. And then his ribs and his backbone. Now I'm actually, since I made this part long, I'm going to give him a little squiggle in the rib area and that'll stop his uh, ribs from turning too much. So get the neck the length I like it again. And see this little squiggle will, will make it lay flatter. So glue on the actual squiggle and the actual spine. And that's going to be too hot to touch, so I'm going to let that cool a bit more. And you can see how the marker bled through the paper here, because I just used um, thick paper. I didn't do cardstock or anything. Should have, but I just wanted to do this demo fast. So get some of that extra glue. And you can see how I pushed the glue down onto the backbone there. You can do that. Or you could also add more glue. And then his hips. Now I did make this too long. So I'm going to snip it off. And that piece went flying. And do a little curl. So I was blocking it with my hand. But I made a little curl for his hips. And the hips go in front of the end of the backbone there. And that wire is actually sticking out a little, so I'm going to curl it more. You kind of have to just kind of play with it as you go to get the best fit on all the pieces. The main thing is you don't want wires sticking out, because that looks weird. So there's his little hips. So glue up the hips. There's that. So there's his body, his his main core there. And you can see his head moves, uh, his jaw moves. It's kind of hard to move his jaw. If you were actually making an animation with him, you'd want to use tweezers to move his jaw. And then his hips move. So in case he needs to like dance or anything. Dancing skeletons are always fun. Um, I'm going to do like time lapse for the arms and legs, but basically you want to make each limb like and then attach the limbs to the body. So you make the big pieces first and then you attach them together. So I'll do time lapse for that.
Okay, so here he is done. Um, I only burned myself three times, yay! Uh, where the glue gets really thick, like right here and here, um, it's nice because it makes the model really strong, but also it, it gets a lot hotter, so do be careful at that part. Um, I left wire sticking out of his feet because if you were using like foam or something for your your floor, you can stick him in it. Uh, and he'll stand up and hold his poses better. So his joints can move nicely. Uh, his feet, his ankles, uh, his arms and legs. Uh, also, ordinarily what I would do is I would make the hands be so you could reverse them. You'd have a skeleton on both sides instead of just the, the wires. That way he could turn his hand around and have his thumb be, you know, like a real hand, but I just have the flat hands for now, wires sticking out, um, but yeah, he'll, he's kind of big. So that's him. Uh, I'm going to put a few tips on the blog, but mainly just uh, always cut your wires longer than you expect. Uh, you can always cut off the extra, but you can't, like, stick two wires together it makes it makes it weaker so make sure that you have a continuous wire um, the only exception is if you have interchangeable hands like if you're gonna shoot for a long time you wanna make extra hands because they do wear out if you bend the fingers um, and then you can just leave them off and glue them on as needed uh, I'll show you an example of that in a sec but yeah he's all done yay skeleton so cute.